Today on Great Places Seen, a prototype trailer, New Camp's founder, tech tips and treats, a factory tour, and a cuckoo swarm. I drive through the countryside sniffing out tasty foods and desserts. Come along for the ride as we score good times at New Camp 24. I have a new neighbor. Now, I certainly don't do everything right, but perhaps that doesn't look so stable. Maybe I should just go find a big donut. Wow. Thank you. Like, help yourself. Can't hurt with one in the middle. Thank you. Now oh, that's a full meal. Well, sometimes the uh, advantage to arriving late is there are a few leftovers. Now I have breakfast and lunch. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> it's as big as your hand. These are huge donuts. This is a treat every year at U Camp. Well, I did add a banana, so uh, that's eating healthy, right? Yeah, I think so. I had a chance to speak a while with New Camp CEO Scott Hubble, so I'm having my donuts sitting on the front porch with a nice morning breeze. I certainly have no worries making a mess here. Well, for a couple chores today, I'm gonna fill up uh, some more water. Get my sink all washed out. This is the other thing that I wanted to get done at U Camp, and that's get my uh, propane tank filled. 16 bucks for this tank, not bad. So I gotta run it down and have it filled up. One thing I can't forget to take off, and that's the uh, sensor, <laughs> otherwise, I will lose that for sure. All right, got my yellow tag on, we're ready to go. With my tank in place, I see the service center will fill it for a dollar less. Hmm. Still having a nice dip in the pond out behind the fence are the elk. They almost seem like holiday reindeer in summer. They drop their antlers every year like yeah. a deer do. Could that be a vacationing elf? Amid festive trailers, it's time for the annual swap meet. Here's a U-Camp gift. Yeah, price is right. Now let's sniff out a treat for you. Here's a peek at New Camp's newest teardrop trailer, the Tab 360. It's positioned between the very popular Tab 320 and the larger Tab 400. This trailer seems to hit the sweet spot with a north-south interior layout, bringing the kitchen and bathroom forward, utilizing overhead and perimeter storage to open the full width, most of the length, and center height. It all creates an extremely spacious feel in a unit under 17 feet long, 7 feet 4 inches wide, 76 inches interior height, while overall sitting at 8 feet 9 inches tall and just 2,600 pounds dry weight. This prototype has tinted plexiglass windows. It features a cassette toilet, in addition to tanks holding 25 gallons fresh and 18 gallons gray. It uses 30 amp shore power, the Nautilus water system, with exterior outlets, aggressive off-road tires, and electric brakes, pitched axles, A signature New Camp porthole window. A new enlarged front utility bin with a 20 pound propane tank.
waste hose storage, pass-through door to the propane tank, all locking, and an upgraded tab door with keyless entry. An offset porch light to help keep those bugs out. Interior amenities abound. The wet bath is similar to the 320. A sink is integrated above the toilet. The faucet doubles as a shower head. It's vented above the door. The center fantastic fan can draw out air and steam. Generous soft closed drawers, bins, and a clever little space by the door. A five cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator, the largest among the tabs. A glass top sink and two burner stove combo. Thirty-one by eighty inch primary sleeping, sitting, and lounging area. A twelve volt smart TV complements the Bluetooth audio system. Very abundant LED accent lighting. The dinette converts into a second thirty-one by seventy-nine inch sleeping area. Standard 2-inch hitch. The Tab 360 has central air, the Aldi heating hot water system. You have choices between three packages, a Black Canyon upgrade, and Battleborn lithium battery add-on. There of course is more, this QR code will give you all the latest on the new Tab 360. There's your sneak peek, there's also a link to New Camp's video in the description. And with my tank safely retrieved, hey it's time for a barbecue dinner. You know me, I'm checking out the dessert table first. When it's time for food, the line grows fast. There's new camp founder Joe Mullet. We'll hear from him shortly. But first. And so it's user friendly. More potatoes? Thank you. Sure. You can't have enough potatoes. This is the founder story. So many of you may have heard the story before from Joe, either one-on-one -on -one or even last year. Um, he delivered the founder's story. And this time, we're just gonna do it a little bit interview style and uh, make sure we hit um, chronological highlights for Joe and um, his journey. Where did you grow up? Here. <laughs> Actually about seven miles west of here on, on a farm growing up with my dad being a farmer and we were farming with horses and bought a piece of plywood, got a jigsaw, I had a jigsaw, but I took a jigsaw and I cut it out with that and then I used my belt sander till I had it exactly like I wanted it and that became the first camper of how we started the tear drop business with three-quarter plywood and then covering it with fiberglass. It was a start, 
it was a start. It's like starting in your garage. It's, it's, it's amazing. And you just start small, and you can do so many things that just changes the parameters around you. And then I got introduced to the Silver Shadow. There was a problem with the Silver Shadow trailer, and they were made in Idaho, and they were living in this area that they didn't want to take it back to Idaho, or they didn't want to fix it back there. So because I was starting to build teardrops, this uh, person that was selling them for me said, hey, Joe, why don't you uh, try to fix this trailer for me? I said, OK, bring it down. We'll take a look at it. And he said, hey, by the way, when you do that, reverse engineer it and build one with yourself. So. That's what happened, the silver shadow. Uh, I took measurements and whatever, then I made my own and designed it how I like what I thought would be a good start. You saw this little Scotty out here? Maybe you didn't, it's out here on the left. It's, it's one I built just not too long ago, but I built the Scotty as well. Uh, the, the retro Scotty, just like they were built back in the 60s and the 70s, I think, or 80s. And I still, uh, I said I won't start anything yet anymore, but boy, I'll tell you what, I just want to build that sky so bad. 2006, seven, I developed my truck campers. We designed them and developed them and actually built them ourselves. The sidewalls, the aluminum, we welded them ourselves, laminated everything ourselves, and built some truck campers. And of course then 08 comes along and everything is, phew, it's gone. And before that, there was a separation from us and a little guy uh, because of some of the things that had happened and I went on my own. I didn't make the best choices. And fall of 08, it was all gone. It was no orders. I had I laid everybody off. I fired my salesman and uh, there I was, sitting in my office, weeping. I had no clue. I thought this was my dream and here I am, there's nothing. And I was in debt and I thought I was gonna lose my house and everything, my property. And we made a deal what, what the rights would cost and it was, a, it was an amazing deal. It was just, God was just working something that just blew me away. And this, in fact, I think it was January 2011, we signed a contract, I acquired the tab, brought it in and revamped the whole thing. Uh, took all the wood out and made everything in the aluminum framework Tried to make it better right away, and that's how we started in, in 2011. So it was 2017, oh we had uh, just climbed to a height we had never climbed to before, and you know, just been blessed year after year after year, whether it was 100%, 50%, 30%, 70%, it was just crazy growth. And it was all pretty much handed to us. And then 2018 came, a little rough, settled down, got a, a dose of reality for the first time ever. But when you get those doses of reality, you have an opportunity to reflect. And that's what we did. We, we realized, man, this has been a gift, and it always is, but when something doesn't continue the way that it has in our lives previously, you ask why. Those core values are came, uh, came about by partly how I wanted to live. And some of the things, how do we get here? And so there was, there's a few things that have to happen to get to those places, to the core values. One of them is always do the right thing. And I think about character. Character is the set of inward values that ex display themselves outwardly. And you pursue after competence. Competence, again, is an inward motivation that you do the right thing in every situation. So that's what drove us to these four values, the hard work, always do the right thing, Enjoy each other. May your life, as you journey from here, impact those that you meet wherever you go. Actually, you will. And decide to impact them in a positive way so that they can bring life, what they learn from you, to impact the world around you. The world's in a mess. And they need you all. And together, we can and we will make a difference. May the richest blessings of our Maker in Heaven bless you as you enjoy this week and as you go from here. May His goodness and His grace and His mercy be showered on you as you live your life. Give it all you got. That's how I want to live my life. When I draw my last, last breath, I want to know that I gave everything that I had within me. May you do the same. You will change the world.
Thank you. Yeah, that's... CEO Scott Hubble adds the story behind the new camp name. New by the sound, new beginnings. By the look, you see the omelet on top of it. That is a tip of the hat to the German heritage and this community. And finally, camp. And that's just showing the honor to the industry that we serve. So, new camp. Well, good Thursday morning. It's a little bit after 7 a.m. Got a little bit of uh, mist on the window here at the Timbercrest Campground. I may have mentioned in a previous video or two that I'm just not a morning person. But this is U Camp and things happen early. And uh, so there is a big breakfast about to happen and the Aldi seminar. That's going to be a good one. A lot is happening in the Aldi system underneath that bed, so I got to go find out more about the Aldi system. Well, perhaps in the category of you just never know, uh, while the sun is hitting the rear window and it's covered with dew, there's nothing on the front window in the shade. Beautiful morning today. All set for a brand new day. Just a little bit of housekeeping before I go. I'm going to dump my tanks and then we'll be on our way. With early chores done, the clouds are beginning to clear. And it's time for another you can't meal. A haystack breakfast is on the menu. There's the telltale sign something is going on. That was filling to say the least, so I'm starting to work that one off right now. Farmers have been working long before me. Who needs a tractor? Four horsepower is clearly getting the job done. I think I mentioned last year that Sugar Creek feels like the brick capital of the world. There are several plants. I think you'd call that a brickyard. Time for the Aldi Tech Talk. So the question was, if you need to top it off the glycol side of the system and you don't have glycol, how much water to volume that you can top it off? And it's 10%. So I would stay right around a quart of distilled water. And then if you're losing more than that, there's an issue with the system. And it doesn't take much bleach at all to sanitize the system. Um, if you go on the FDA website, they have really interesting information on there about how much vinegar it takes to sanitize, which we're a big fan of vinegar um, when it comes to sanitizing things. And then bleach. It's literally like one drop of bleach in an eight ounce cup of water will sanitize it. So I've seen RV owners with like a gallon pouring it in their gravity fill and it's like, that's just a little too much. Yeah, so a quarter cup is what the 320 guys are saying. So they'll put the quarter cup in with a gallon so they can get it in and then top it off. Right, and so I've been in the RV industry and I was a tech for 20 some years. And what we would do is about a similar ratio to that, fill up the system, fill up the system and let it sit. Let it do its work. And then really flush things out. So yeah, I would consult the FDA website to get the ratios right, but what you want to do is you want to lower the pH. And I think with the pH, if you get down to like three on the pH scale, 
that's when you really start killing things. Yeah. Yes. The question is, is the all-day system really sensitive to being level? It's not like a refrigerator. Um, I, I think if you got the all-day system to the point that it wouldn't work because it was off-level, you would be sleeping next to your max air fan on the roof. So, yeah, I, it's not a huge concern. So to reestablish the air cushion, the first step would be to turn off your water source, being city or the water pump. Go to your faucets, open them until you have no water flow to relieve the water pressure on the system. Leave a hot water tap open and then go to, to your yellow drain valves that are located near the boiler. They're mounted to the floor. If you have a 400, you have a flow too, so you'll have two yellow valves. If you have a 320, you'll have one yellow valve. Open those valves for a couple minutes. Just allow the water to drain out underneath the coach. Once you let it go for a few minutes, close, put the yellow valves back in the horizontal position. Close your water taps, turn on your water source again, and then go to your hot water taps and let the water flow and you'll have air escaping, the hissing and popping like when you dewinterize. And that, when you get the air coming out of the system like that on the hot side of your faucets, you know you've done it right because that air is coming from the boiler. And so the water will come up to its natural state where you'll reestablish the air cushion. Yes. So the question was, is that the reestablishing the air cushion, is that the same process to try to clear out the red fail? And actually the red fail, most common cause of that is battery voltage. So it actually has nothing, low battery voltage. Yeah, so the low battery voltage will cause the electronics to read things wrong and then you'll get this false red fail on it. If you have a persistent red fail, I would look at your glycol level to make sure that's where it should be. And your glycol level should be about a half an inch above minimum when the system's cold. Yeah, I would definitely take it to a qualified technician to get your glycol changed. <laughs> so, when we do a glycol service, we use five gallons, even though the system only holds about two and a half gallons. And that's to ensure that we get all the old pushed out with the new. And then DIYers typically use about 20 gallons of glycol. Because they get the system airlocked, and then they can't get the glycol moving again. They get red fails because the boiler is overheating. So it's $500, the glycol is over $200. It's just worth having someone do it. It literally takes us 20 to 30 minutes to do it. And while we're doing it, we check the system, we make sure your pump speed's set right. Um, yeah, it's just not a DIY project in my mind. So the question was about using the all-day system on electric and gas. And if you really want to get the system to heat up fast, you can use it on 2KW and propane. Now, there's nothing wrong with using both sides of it like that. But one thing I can say is if you're in a really cold climate, you're gonna have to use propane. So propane is equivalent to like 5KW. You can run the system with no water in it. It won't damage it. With lots of good questions answered, time for a new Camp Factory tour to see all these details come together and become gleaming new trailers. It's a big place. It's a busy place. Component parts are gathered and organized 
assembled and readied for final installation on the main assembly lines. New Camp says its trailers can take on average between one and two and a half weeks to build. Truck campers can take up to two weeks. The overall process from start to delivery can take between two and three months. New Camp does not sell direct to customers. You're not able to pick up a trailer here. Everything ships to and is sold by dealers. New Camp trailers start with an all-aluminum frame. The external wall is fiberglass with Asdel or propylene, which eliminates problems with moisture rotting or deteriorating the walls. Sandwiched in between the aluminum framing is block foam insulation. Founder Joe Mullet switched to aluminum frames after acquiring the rights from Tabert, a company based in Denmark. The name was abbreviated to Tab and the smaller tag-along versions became, you guessed it, TAG. Prices do tend to be higher. It's the quality grade of these materials and the components being used. Plus, it's not a high volume manufacturing operation, which allows for focus on a thorough build process with the aim of fewer issues developing later. You can see these cabinets are exceptionally sturdy with dovetail joints. With so many handcrafted details, there is advanced digital cutting and etching used to create parts to exact and consistent specifications. This is also a super clean workplace. The air exhaust efficiently sweeps and removes particles. This is like a big hardware and home improvement store. Anything and everything needed to build trailers. There are so many details to see, all together in one busy but clearly well-paced factory. No one appears to be rushing any work, just taking the time to make sure it's right.
That was definitely fun. Time for a short trip back to my trailer. Then, a turnaround to do something I haven't done during past U camps. It's the traditional cuckoo clock swarm. Sugar Creek boasts the world's largest cuckoo clock. You can see my 2022 UCAMP video for a really good look at it. I also went to drive a short way out of town. The first new camp trailers were built on this road, and the company is officially known as Pleasant Valley Teardrop Trailers, LLC. I've seen other Pleasant Valley roads along the way. This way has covered bridges over sidewalks, over the road. Right now, there's an intense cornhole tournament that has been building to a climactic final. Everybody with the oohs and the ahs on every throw. All right, Kendrick. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together! Of course, this has to be followed with food, along with UCAMP prizes and awards. I will see you guys in Glenhaven. Have a good night. Sure. Right there. Where is it? 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 Where is it?
26. You guys got your tickets out? 9638 Oh no, I trust you. This is a trust game. Now that I've said that, I will check. 963519 963519 Come on down. A three pack of some of their favorite wines. Priya, pull that number. 3,700. 3,700. So, Ace of Accessories Award. The winner this year is Kathy Zekman. Yeah. Kathy. Yeah. All right, let's do another Camper Award as voted by you guys. So, this is the Master of Modification Award and it goes to the best mods that have been done to a unit. This year's winner is, is this a typo? Come on. Leonard Keel! Right. And that goes to the person who's traveled the most miles in the last 12 months. This year's winner with 20,120 miles, wow, is Glenn Grisham. Glenn, where you at? So this is a Tag 5 Wide giveaway donated by All Pro Adventures. Priya, pick our winner. Alrighty, so the final award this evening is our Ambassador Award. The Brand Ambassador for UCamp 24. First owned a 320. And like a prodigal son, ran away from home. Bought an Airstream. But then came back and now owns a 400. Don Kensley. Glory the night by thanking for our and my ship by thanking the person that made this all possible, and obviously that's you. Without you, there's no us. There's no new camp, there's no you camp. And there is no community, so. getting closer to that time where the big tents are going to come down and U Camp 24 is going to come to a close. One more day to go and big news that next year U Camp is going to be in a different venue actually going back to the original venue and instead of June it's going to be in August. Settling in for a quiet evening ahead of the rally's final day. With one last stop by the morning coffee truck, it's off to one last seminar. This one now applies to me, traveling and camping solo. This person here. <laughs> Karaoke finishes the festivities. Is that a new prototype? Oh, it's actually founder Joe Mullet's ride. And he sings too. I love to sing, but I don't like to sing by myself. 
I'll see what happens. sun is setting on UCAMP 24. Thanks for coming along. And the road is waiting for more adventure. believe this small twisting road has a 55 mile per hour speed limit? Thanks for watching and follow GPS to the next destination.